Hi, I'm Jeff Ray, your host each week for Economic Outlook. We're glad you've joined us. If you're a regular viewer, welcome back. If you're new, we hope you'll make plans to join us each week as we bring you stories about the people, the companies, and the communities driving economic growth in our region. Today our discussion will take us to the Benton Harbor area where we'll take a closer look at the 2020 Senior PGA Championship planned for May and talk about how events like this raise the profile of the area and help spur economic development opportunities in the region. Coming up on Economic Redevelopment efforts have been underway for more than a decade in the Benton Harbor area. With the Harbor Shores Golf Course and the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship being important cornerstones to those development efforts. Today we plan to take a closer look at the 2020 Championship and update you on those development efforts in the area. Joining me today for that conversation are Ryan Ogle, the Championship Director of the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship in Benton Harbor. Deb O'Connor, the Director of Global Sponsorship for the KitchenAid brand and Rob Cleveland, the President and CEO of the Cornerstone Alliance in Benton Harbor, Michigan. Guys, thank you for joining me today. appreciate the chance to talk a little bit about the good work that's happening up there. And we want to maybe, Rob, come your way first and, and just chat a little bit about you know, what's happening in Benton Harbor. I think there's been this really uh, uh, pretty amazing transformation that's happened over the last decade or so. Give us a high-level update for somebody who hasn't been there recently on what's happening. Yeah, well, if you haven't been there recently, you should come. Um, there's uh, any number of reasons to be there, including the uh, eclectic restaurants, not only in Benton Harbor and St. Joseph and the surrounding townships, but uh, a lot of good activity is happening, uh, very similar to uh, all the activity that's happening down here in South Bend. We're, we're blessed right now with a regional economy that I think is really strong. So um, it, to your point, uh, Jeff, there's been a, a lot of activity that started a decade ago on the rebuilding of Main Street, the Harbor Shores development, uh, and, and, and as you know, that never stops, so, right? We have to continue to prime that pump, and we're working on some of those things in Benton Harbor. We have a great development that is at uh, one end of the Main Street corridor there, right there in Benton Harbor, Main Street and Pipestone, a very iconic intersection. Um, and that, uh, that development is a new building, that, uh, a renovation of an old building that Cressy, and, Cressy Commercial Real Estate right here in South Bend is coming north of the border to do some work there, and they're going to put in another uh, dozen apartments and some commercial space. And, and again, that, that um, works into the uh, Benton Harbor Arts District and, and all the great things that are happening on Main Street. So we're seeing a lot of that great activity. Downtown St. Joseph has 100% occupancy so um, you know things are things are really humming along and now is a great time to come uh, my last shameless plug That's maybe right. not my last <laughs> shameless plug but you know um, there's a lot of great things that are happening uh, right now after Labor Day so the, the leaves are starting to turn and, and we're, we still have a, uh, a thriving tourist season going on right now so there's still all kinds of great reasons to come to St. Joe and Benton Harbor. Great well thanks Rob so Deb I want to come your way because uh, from, from the outside Whirlpool has played such an important catalyst role in Kind of redeveloping the area, it's home, and, and so, so so for maybe for business leaders that are watching that aren't as involved in the community, talk a little bit about why Whirlpool is involved and does the things they do to sort of help spur economic growth in the area. There. Well, I mean, I think the most obvious reason is um, bringing in employees that want to be in a vibrant community. So uh, we do our part to uh, make sure that that we can do that. But um, as far as we look at the. Uh, KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship. That was obviously a bigger decision to bring that in and we look at that as sort of a uh, three-legged uh, stool, if you will, so it has to be good for KitchenAid brand, it has to be good for the community, and it has to be good for our customers. So we've been able to, um, with our customers, it's obviously a really unique, great place to bring customers and cultivate relationships. Uh, with the community, it's a fantastic way to bring a lot of people in the area, have them possibly, well, they might go to the beach while they're there, while they watch the championship. They might, um, you know, hang out in our restaurants and then possibly come back again and again and maybe even come and buy something in the area. So it's it's been a great exposure for us. And then as far as the KitchenAid brand, uh, same thing, you know, it gives us an opportunity to highlight our products and be able to um, 
show them off in a really unique setting. So people, when they go, are ready to buy down the line, they'll kind of remember, oh, I saw those KitchenAid appliances while I was on a golf course. So it works out pretty well. Great, so uh, maybe Ryan or, or Rob, uh, kind of come your way, because uh, I want to set the stage for a, a few years ago. Tell us about, you know, kind of the golf course and the, the, the special place that it is and what used to be there prior, before, before we maybe sort of then jump into like what's happening on the golf course. Yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to kind of chime in and then Rob, if you want to say a few things, but uh, Jack Nicholas Signature Golf Course in our neck of the woods is something that not a lot of communities can say, and I believe it's the only one on Lake Michigan. It's a beautiful property and to see what was there uh, before that uh, it's quite eye-opening as someone that moved into the area and got the full story of you know the, the, the warehouses the abandoned warehouses and the amount of just uh, the dumping or whatever that took place on the, the property and the amount of work that was done by community leaders to uh, to clear it out to improve it the amount of money and resources that were put forth and now we have a gym that opened in 2010 and what it's 2019 and they've already hosted four major championships on the course and when it's all said and done um, you know at least seven is currently planned there not too many courses can say that and it's the home of the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship and the only other course that can call a major event home is Augusta National which I think is always cool to put us up in that that uh, echelon of, of golf courses but um, it's been a great property for the PGA of America and our championship because it is bigger than golf so you think about it, it's not just about a golf championship, it's about impacting a community for a long-term positive impact and hoping to bring people back. Um, and lastly, it's a public golf course. Anyone can come and play that. And uh, when our efforts to grow the game of golf, um, it's a perfect uh, spotlight that we can cast on a great golf course, a great community, and a great story. I've played it once or twice. Uh, it uh, made me beg for mercy a few <laughs> times. It's a complicated course, but it's phenomenal. One of the best I've ever played. So pre pretty exciting. There. R Rob, just maybe real quick explain the just the, the kind of this brownfield redevelopment, this this effort to um, to reuse a a, 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 a a really complicated piece of property and having a catalyst like um, like the Senior PGA Championship and Whirlpool helping drive sort of develop. Not all communities have that benefit. Yeah, so you kick the door open on Brownfield and, and technical aspects of economic development. Yeah. So I'll, I'll run right through it um, because it is very, uh, it can be very specific and, and complex. But the Harbor Shores redevelopment is is truly a case study uh, in what an economic development project should look like. Uh, it was a brownfield. There were aspects of it that needed environmental cleanup. Uh, there is tax increment finance uh, that was utilized. The Inn at Harbor Shores, which is a, a, an incredible hotel, an asset, and restaurants, a beautiful spot right there in the harbor. The, that hotel was EB-5, which is a, an immigration program through economic development. Uh, it received new market tax credits. Um, so, and, and there were multiple players. There, there are different uh, legislation that was used for uh, annexing certain property that's in St. Joseph and Benton Harbor. Uh, it was, it's a truly complex but uh, very beneficial, wide-ranging wide -ranging benefits uh, to the entire community. So, um, so there's so many aspects that we utilize from an economic development standpoint, not just a golf course, not a community development, but when you, when you pack it all together, um, the, the whole is greater than the, the, the sum of the parts. Great. Ryan, I want to go back to maybe the championship piece, the Kitchen Championship piece itself, because it, my, my guess is that there is pretty stiff competition amongst golf courses all across the country who'd like to host the championship that, that you host uh, every other year or will have hosted ultimately up to seven times. Talk about um, Benton Harbor and Harbor Shores differentiating yourselves uh, from the others to, to sort of be able to, to host such a, an impressive tournament. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you think about um, our region, there are hundreds of golf courses and there are only a couple that can say they've hosted a major championship. Um, and it speaks loudly to the conditioning of the golf course and to the Jack Nicklaus signature design, um, something that uh, we take a lot of pride in. Um, but it's not easy to attract a major championship to a, to a golf course. And I think first and foremost, it's a true championship test for the average golfer, as, as you alluded to. It can, it can be very difficult, and I can, I can claim the same here. Um, and, but it's also difficult for the professionals. It's a very tough layout, um, and it really challenges the best to kind of show uh, their skill set. On top of that, it's a testament to the, again, the commitment and investment Whirlpool has brought in, in their efforts to bring the, the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship to the region um, and through the partnership of an unprecedented coming back to the community every other year. 
is something you don't see uh, across the across the uh, the landscape of golf for major championships. Um, so we couldn't be more thrilled with that. And I think at the end of the day, the course deserves the credit, um, whether that is uh, putting it up against uh, courses in our region or across the nation, or you could argue across the world. Uh, it's a true championship course. Right. If I could yeah, add, please. though, to um, the PG of America actually came in and when they looked at it, and yes, it's all the things that Ryan said, but it's also more because of the community project it was. Mm -hmm. um, the PG of America thought that was an extra special thing. And frankly, all the players that we talk to about it, when they come in, we tell them the story, and they're always um, behind it. You know, they, they appreciate what has happened there, and they will go out and talk about it themselves. So uh, I think it's, it's the whole not just the course, but the whole story that, that sells it. Um, we're going to take a, just a quick break here in the studio. We're going to go out to the field. George Leffen Yotis, my co-host, is out in the field to share more on this story. George, I'm going to toss it to you. Thanks, Jeff. And welcome to you and our audience to a brand new season of Economic Outlook. I couldn't think of a better place to start this new season for 2019 or 2020 than being here in beautiful uh, downtown Benton Harbor at the Harbor Shores Golf Course. I'm joined today by the general manager of the course, Josh Dockstader. Josh, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Josh, uh, it's a beautiful facility and much has been said about the amount of investment, both in capital and in effort, in making it a catalyst for this community. Tell me a little bit more about Harbor Shores and how it's, what its mission is. Well, Harbor Shores ultimately was, was built and designed to help create an economic impact and growth in the Benton Harbor area by creation of jobs, creation of tourism dollars, and generating more and more interest in the area in itself. When you've taken you know, what would be considered forsaken lands and turned it into a beautiful property, 550 acres of, of you know, Jack Nicklaus signature golf, that's something to be reckoned with. And we, you, you say Jack Nicklaus signature golf, obviously Jack is one of the most recognizable names in the golf industry. Mm -hmm. And so that really was the initial spark for the course. Some years later as the course has matured, mm -hmm. uh, it's more than that now, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's making its uh, it's making a name for itself on a national level. You know, with the KitchenAid Senior PGA Championship being hosted here every other year, you know that that definitely helps drive eyes and traffic to the area. And and you know, going back to that economic impact, it's not just that week alone. It's every week outside of that that's impacted through that. Now we'll start with the week, uh, the, the event, because I believe 2020 is the every other year. So next sure. year, the uh, PGA Senior Open is back here, correct? Yes, it is. What does that event entail for the golf course? Well, uh, a lot of uh, a planning ahead of time so you can execute properly. Ultimately, um, you know, just creating the best playing conditions as possible for the players. Um, you know, and then on the, the food and beverage side of things, making sure that they're fed, their families are fed, you know, things along those lines. There's just a lot of logistics that go in place. Uh, and working closely with the senior championship director, Ryan Ogle, and his team, you know, we do whatever we can to make sure there's, uh, there's, uh, there's nothing that we need to worry about during event week. Now, uh, a lot of times golf courses of this magnitude, of this nature, are in uh, already beautiful areas, already nice neighborhoods. And uh, you heard me say at the beginning of the show that I think downtown Benton Harbor is a beautiful area because it really is. Historically, geographically, uh, Benton Harbor has a lot going for it, and this just added to it. What do you feel that the golf course brings to the community? I know we mentioned before we went on camera that it is one of the only uh, facilities that has first tee on site. Correct. What does that mean? Well, that means, you know, there's a devotion and commitment to the juniors in the area um, and development and growth through the First Tee program, which helps them learn core values, life skills through the game of golf. And servicing over a thousand kids uh, locally is, is something we're very proud of and we're the only Midwest location that has an on-site First Tee. Yeah, and uh, thousands of kids, Josh, and I know that the course and the organization sponsors a lot of those kids who don't have the means. So great job with that. Good luck with the event next year, and thank you for having us out today. Thank you. Jeff, back to you in the studio, where I know you've got a lot more to talk about in regards to this particular event, Harbor Shores, and its impact on Benton Harbor. In the meantime, I'm thinking about putting on a golf shirt, and Josh can show me how to play golf. George, thanks. Appreciate you being out in Benton Harbor and showing us kind of what's going on out there. Uh, good, good story. So, Brian, I want to come back to you, and, and I want to talk a little bit about sort of economic impact. So in the profile, we talked about how events like this raise the profile of an area, have a significant economic impact. Having done this for a few years, my guess is you have some, um, some, some data based on economic impact or can tell us a little bit about the reach this has around the globe. Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing is the showcasing of the region. Um, you know, our championship is uh, broadcasted worldwide on Golf Channel and NBC. 
um, to over 100 countries and over 200 million households. And we do a study with Nielsen to add what's the value of that for, uh, for the golf course, for the region, and on average over $8 million impact just on the brand awareness and on the uh, broadcast alone. And what's, again, when I say these things, it's every other year. It's not just one event. Um, and then in 2016, we partnered with the Michigan Economic Development Corporation on an economic impact assessment, and in 2018 with Michigan State University. And between those two studies, we can ac accurately say on average, eight to $10 million impact to the region, uh, and, and that includes all of Michiana, through this championship, again, every other year. So you add that up, again, a, a total of seven times that we'll be here at least, um, that says a lot. And then you look at the local employment opportunities. We have over 500 temporary jobs around the championship that results in well over 500 to $600,000 in wages to local individuals. Um, and then I think there's the, the charitable donation that uh, obviously there's a lot of charitable donation in our community, but through the championship, nearly a million dollars has been donated to youth organizations like the Benton Harbor Schools or the Benton Harbor Promise and First Tee programs and Boys and Girls Club. Um, so those are some of the impacts when you put value to it. Uh, I take a lot of pride in being able to showcase our community and bring people back. And there's a lot of untold benefits that we can't quantify from people revisiting our community. Um, Deb, let's uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, Whirlpool and KitchenAid in particular, and, and just the, sort of KitchenAid's uh, you know kind of involvement that week. Some of the things that you have going, uh, things that, uh, that 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 people will be able to see and feel as part of that effort. Yeah, it's a great opportunity for us to just highlight everything, all of our products, especially our new products, and then really we like to get people um, to interact with our products. So we have what we call the KitchenAid Fairway Club that Ryan mentioned earlier, and it's it's a giant tent, and it's got a demonstration kitchen, and it's got um, other smaller kitchens where we encourage people to come in and actually work with the chef that we have to go through and make your own salsa or you know so you actually can um, use some of the products and it's really a lot of fun we have a chef there that's there all day every day people can go in and ask their culinary questions if you want to learn how to use a knife you can go in and he'll help you out with that or answer any KitchenAid questions and then um, probably the most exciting part of the week uh, we have celebrity chefs come in so in the past we've had Carla Hall uh, we've had Jeffrey Zakarian, you know, so the the big Food Network and and um, Bravo chefs uh, come in, and that just packs the house, and people love watching that, and they get to interact with them because it's a fairly small small venue. So um, so a lot of activity in the Fairway Club, and then around the course we have different areas where people can walk in and again touch and feel and spend some time with us. So uh, it's a real fun opportunity to interact with our brand. Great, and uh, the Whirlpool employees play an active role over the course of the week as well? Yeah, um, it, with this activation, I probably have 50 to 60 people who, who you know, stand by and help talk about product and that kind of thing. Um, but also we encourage uh, all of our employees to come out and, and participate, whether you're just watching or uh, volunteer for Ryan in a different position as a marshal, et cetera, uh, or, or spend some time with KitchenAid. Great. So, Rob, I want to come your way because your job is is really about driving economic growth in, in that area. Um, how do you take advantage of an opportunity like the the tournament to make that happen? Yeah, we take as much advantage as we can. So, as you know, from an economic development standpoint, we're always looking for that small uh, advantage. And so. Um, I can tell you from our perspective, every two years the Super Bowl comes to town because it gives us that small advantage to go out and say, hey, do you like golf? And even if you don't like golf, here's some things that, that we have to offer. And, and so uh, what is really great from a community standpoint is I believe KitchenAid says, look, we're going to support this tournament and here are all the options you can, you can have access to, but also the world is your oyster take advantage of this in any way you can. So we do that. So we bring site consultants in from around the country. We've had companies and consultants come in every, uh, for every event. Uh, and we always, we, we offer them golf. We, we give them a tour of one of the Whirlpool facilities. They get a tour of the Cook Nuclear Plant. And so when you, these, these site consultants, as you know, Jeff, are getting wined and dined and, and the finest opportunities um, that are available. So for us to be able to go and say, hey, look, we have, we have a championship golf uh, opportunity. You, you can take a tour through a nuclear plant, you can tour our wineries and breweries. Um, it, it is not difficult to get people to come to, the, to, to town. And so then you bring these influencers who, who are in front of corporate CEOs making decisions on where plants are going to go and 
uh, where jobs are going to be created. Um, it, it gives us that opportunity, that small advantage, and, and so that's how we leverage it. Uh, we're already starting to plan now. I believe we're 34 weeks away. Um, we, we're ready to go, uh, and, and we're making plans already for how we're going to host and showcase the community and leverage the tournament to do that. Great. Uh, Rob, I want to stay with you for a second, too, because you mentioned this is, this is a fierce competition around the country, competition for jobs or new investments. Um, can you talk specifically about uh, Michigan's done well, has uh, one of the better business climates in the Midwest or the country. Uh, just uh, m maybe a quick high level assessment of the business climate in Michigan right now and what's happening. Yeah, so uh, I'll tell you the, the other thing that is very interesting. The thing we have heard most often from site consultants is we just assumed everything in Michigan was Detroit. Right, and, and whether that's good or bad, uh, from our standpoint, we always like to tell people there's two Michigans. There's West Michigan and East Michigan. And, and certainly Benton Harbor and St. Joe, there's nothing, uh, very little that's like Detroit, right? So it gives us an opportunity to open their eyes, these, these consultants and companies, to the fact that not everything is like Detroit. And, and so, um, so that's one aspect. We get to show them a different side of Michigan. The economy in Michigan is, is, is thriving. Um, we're, we're working on legislation now. We're always working on legislation for, uh, to, to broaden tax abatement and TIF. And as an economic developer, you know, we're, we're never satisfied. We're always looking for more tools, and we could always use more, more tools in the sandbox. But uh, we get great support from the Michigan Economic Development Corporation in terms of not only recruiting companies, but also building communities. And, and so we're utilizing those programs and, and uh, we're, we're, we're doing all we can to support the governor and her efforts and, um, and working with the legislature to broaden our toolbox. Great. Ryan, I'm gonna come back your way a second. Uh, Rob touched on 34 weeks until the championship, which <laughs> sounds like a long time to, to some people, but obviously your team has been working for some time. Uh, talk just a little bit about the, the logistics of this. It takes two years to sort of plan, put all these things in place. Help us understand what, what you guys have been doing the last couple of years to be ready. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it does take about a two year window, 18 to 24 months. And the way I like to explain it is just imagine if you go to a Notre Dame football game. You walk in, you've got your parking, you walk into the, the stadium, there's restrooms already there, there's a concession, your seat's there that you can watch the game, the field's ready. Um, we have to build that experience for temporarily on a golf course. So the logistic starts at the outside and kind of works its way in. So, you know, roughly 18 months out, we start looking at where are we putting everyone, um, whether that's from parking perspective or where are we gonna put Rob and his customers when they're on the course in their private hospitality? Um, how are we gonna get them there? So we do have to shuttle a lot of people in. We do have some on-site. Um, and then it's where are we placing everything on the course that provides a great unique spectator experience and showcases things like the KitchenAid Fairway Club and other areas and activations. Um, and on top of that, then you're also going out to local businesses and trying to you know, provide value and an opportunity to entertain their clients, their customers, their prospects through our hospitality program. We also recruit roughly 1,500 volunteers in the community that um, you know, always answers the call every other year. Um, and then we start promoting and ultimately try to get people to come enjoy this championship. There are a lot of steps that we have to take and being that we've been at Harbor Shores uh, so many times now, it gets a little bit easier to know what we're gonna do, but it gets a little bit more challenging because we're continually challenged to say what's new, what's bigger, what's better, what's different this time. And uh, we kind of mentioned, I think you mentioned the local breweries and wineries and some things that we learned from 2018 is that's very popular in our region. And so we're doubling down on that and, and um, showcasing the Maker's Trail 19th hole. It's a place with private or local uh, breweries, wineries, and distilleries highlighting small businesses in our region and showcasing our, uh, our makers. Um, and that's also for the non-golf spectator that maybe wants to come and, and enjoy the championship but doesn't really get behind the golf. Um, but there's a process that takes to plan all of that too, but it adds a unique experience. And we work with a local YMCA to create a YMCA kids zone, which is an area for kids to come get lessons uh, from PGA professionals, play in bounce houses and just have a hoot when they're, you know, they're told to be quiet all day. They can finally let loose in the kids zone. So it's planning all of these uh, things outside of the ropes, as we say, where the competition is very important and it is a major championship. Uh, our team really focuses on outside the ropes. We're currently a team of five and we'll grow to about 20 over the next three months um, and get ready for you know tens of thousands of spectators and visitors to join our championship and our volunteers and corporate clients. Yep. Uh, um, 
Devin, our last maybe 30 seconds or so, just, just to, so uh, hopefully the non-golf fans are still watching, but, uh, but, but if they are and, and, and they've never experienced something like this, just a, a quick um, words of advice on, on why they ought to come out and enjoy this. Well, if they, if they like cooking, if they like any other activities that we, we have, the kids zone, et cetera, it's a great place for families. It's not just for golf and there's a lot to see. Um, and especially if you like cooking, come on in and, and learn to cook with us. Great, sounds good. Well, guys, thank you so much. For, um, if people are wanting more information about the championship, where would I send them? Yeah, the best place to go is srpga.com. It stands for Senior PGA. srpga.com. You'll also learn about opportunities to entertain, attend, or volunteer there. Great, sounds good. Guys, thanks so much. Really look forward to learning more about and watching and, and actually being there again. It's a, one of my favorite uh, things to do in the area, so thanks so much. So. Thank you. That's it for our show today. Thank you for watching. To watch the extended version of this show, this episode again, or any of our past episodes, you can find Economic Outlook at WNIT.org. We also encourage you to like us on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. I'm Jeff Ray. I'll see you next week.